You've likely seen the viral video online. A woman enters an elevator, presses buttons wildly, and looks around as if she's being chased. But what was chasing her? And more importantly, what happened to her after the video ends? Was she a victim of her own demons? Or was something more sinister to blame? Today's topic is Elisa Lamb. Fills with dread, probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister Hood. I'm gonna kill you. So. In April, I went to Los Angeles, and I stayed in what I call America's Best Murder Inn. Um, <laughs> I just sort of looked up. Um, that is a, a Yelp review right there. It was going to be. I just sort of uh, typed in, like, uh, you know, Hotels.com and, like, three stars, less than this many dollars. And uh, my comedy partner and I each booked a room, and he relied on me, which was a mistake. Uh, is this Adam? Adam. Uh-huh. We've... <laughs> It was a mistake because uh, we got there and it was definitely in Skid Row, which you never, that's not a place you ever want to be. Is Whoever this. named that neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, it's exactly what you would think it is. It's bad. Yeah. And uh, apparently today's topic is like a mile away from that. Oh, really? So was not too What was far the off. hotel you stayed at? It was called America's Best Value Inn. Oh, but, but you called it America's, America's Best, Best Murder, Murder Inn. Inn. Yeah. So I... Uh, when I was looking into this hotel, they were saying that, you know, it doesn't have a good reputation. No, no. And I was like, yeah, I can vouch for that. What was that area like? Skid how Road? long ago How long ago was this? This was April 2018. I was there. Oh, so this was... Re- so is it still pretty shitty? Yes. Okay, because they say it's like... They're be- it's being on gentrified. The up- yeah, it's yeah. being gentrified. So, like, but- we were in this, like, nightmare hotel, motel, because the doors opened to the outside, and they were, like, luckily they were, like, steel doors, but they were, like, windows. <laughs> Bulletproof also, doors. Com- full confession. Not everything functioned very well, uh, including the bathroom. And, uh, you know, if you go, sometimes, you know, you flush, and it just sort of runs, and nothing uh-huh. happens. Well, in the morning, I had my constitutional, <laughs> the morning that we were going to check out, and I flushed, and all the water went out of the bowl, oh. leaving just the, the damage. Just the damage. Just the damage, <laughs> and then none of the water came back. Oh, that's the worst. But then we had to check out, so I just left. Yeah. What else are you going to do? And Adam and I were getting in the rental car, and I was like, go, 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 go. And he's like, what? I was like, shh. Just go, just go, just hey, go. Hey, that's on them, if you ask me. It's, what, are you going to go down to the front desk and be like, pardon me? Pardon me. Uh, I've destroyed your toilet. Yes, there's just a turd in your toilet. They're like, like Sam's water. <laughs> that is not the worst thing that people have left oh, in the hotel or the no. toilet. That was probably the best thing they found in that hotel room. Yeah, you guys week. are freaking welcome. Oh. Uh, so anyway, so Skid Row, would not recommend it. Also, maybe do a little bit more research, Heather, before you travel. <laughs> to Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've, I've been to... L.A. many a time. I do not think I've ever been to Skid Row. But uh, the, the only it thing sounds know, like what I would imagine it would be. What I know Skid Row from is Little Shop of Horrors. That's is that where he... Down, that's, Skid Row is what they sing about on the I Gotta Get Out of Here song. Oh, so yeah. the shop is in on Skid Row? I believe it is. Oh, well, that explains why... <laughs> Why all that nonsense is going on? Yeah, I mean the one song is called Skid Row. Oh. It's a really good song. I can sing all the parts to it too. Oh, I like Suddenly Seymour. Oh god, that song, that song makes me. you cry. Yeah, I like the dentist in that movie. Ugh. Uh. Well, you've been talking about Skid Row, um, not the band, mind you. Oh, that was a band. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you are right when you say was. I don't think they. <laughs> I don't think they've had anything current in years, so I'm assuming they've broken up. Rest in peace, Kid Rock. Yeah, yeah. And rest in peace, Elisa Lamb. Oh, yeah. Who is, topic. Who is the uh, topic of today? A viewer request from several people. A, several or listener, people. Viewer. So, <laughs> viewer. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to our uh, TV station yet. I've been watching a lot of Fox 4 News in the morning. They have viewer's voice, which is just where... 
I would say unhinged people call the news <laughs> and shout into the ether. I imagine when you when it answers, it's like, thanks for calling Fox 4. At the tone, please shout whatever emotional issues you're having. And people just call and holler into it. And it's just What nuts. are they mad about? Like politics? Anything and everything. And they have. And I will. I do appreciate Fox 4 because they're a little bit cheeky. And they'll say, like, they'll play kind of both sides of the issue. And normally the more rational side, it sounds a little bit more rational. And they'll have, like, a psychotic person just being like, like, ah, why, is, why would you fire a police person, officer for shooting somebody? And you're like, well, maybe they're in their house unarmed <laughs> and just trying to hang yeah. out and watch football. And yeah. so they always pick, like, for the worst takes, they always pick the worst audio, which is, I think, pretty fair. That's uh, <laughs> the news. I might have to start watching this because it sounds oh, just like a bunch of bloopers. It, 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 the viewer's voice, and it's like, why would you take phone calls from these people? Um, for... But, for uh, Good TV, I guess so. I will say my uncle Jerry, who I love so much and so deep, he's my like one of my just absolute favorite humans on the planet. He gets real mad about just anything, and uh, he, <laughs> I feel that if if you're not from Dallas, look up Pete Delkis. He's oh, yeah. a local weatherman who mm-hmm. everyone calls it like the like Delkis measure, where like the worse the storm gets, the more clothes he takes off. So he like <laughs> he'll loosen his tie, then he'll take the jacket off, then he rolls the sleeves up, then the tie is gone. And if it's like if the top button comes unbuttoned, there's we're probably fucked. there's gonna be a tornado. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, we're uh, all fucked. But my uncle hates uh, how big his head is. <laughs> <laughs> he just hates, he does have a big head. He though. hates Pete Delcus's giant head, and he called the station and was like, "Tell Pete Delcus <laughs> not to stand so close to the camera because his head's so big." It's just like, oh, that was a viewer's voice. <laughs> no, well, I don't. The, he that's Channel Eight, so they don't have viewer's voice. Channel Eight's like, well, if we did viewer's voice, it'd only be complaints about Pete Delcus, right? Uh, I hope Nathan. someone passed that message along to him, though. He also complained to the newspaper because they stopped putting staples in the TV guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's so mad. He called the newspaper. Some Uncle poor person. Jerry is my spirit animal. He's, I'll have further Uncle Jerry stories <laughs> as we'll go as we go. But please always, um, always share an Uncle Jerry story. Oh my goodness! So, so today's topic is someone who had an unfortunate experience in a hotel. Yes, on Skid Row. Elisa Lamb is our topic today. I'm Christy. I'm Heather. And let's get into this. So who was Elisa Lamb? Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old college student from British Columbia. She had recently withdrawn from the University of British Columbia to travel solo across the West Coast. Which sounds super fun. I should have dropped out of college. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying last night to a group of people. Was was I in that? (laughs) You may have been there. That college is a sham (laughs) and I should have just traveled after high school. (laughs) We've gotten a lot more out of life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I would have spent way less money. I heard that. Yeah. So her plan was to start in San Diego, gorgeous city. Oh, so nice. And eventually make her way to Santa Cruz. Don't know if I've been there, but... Home of the slugs, from what I remember about college mascots. The slugs? I believe UC Santa Cruz is the banana slug. (laughs) Well, I have a new favorite team. I don't... I I relate heavily to the banana slug. (laughs) That's fantastic. I want a, a banana slug shirt. Well, during her travels, she called her parents every day and had a blog that she regularly updated. On it, she posted pictures of models and fashion and also talked about her struggles with mental illness. This is a Tumblr page. Tumblr page, yes. So she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression and was taking several prescribed medications, including Welbutrin, Lamictal, Seroquel, and Effexor. I have taken three of four of these. What's your uh, review? <sighs> I'll tell you right now. Well, I'm currently on Wellbutrin. Okay, I've heard good things about that. Wellbutrin's good. I have not taken Lamictal. Seroquel is the devil. Oh, no way. What's it Holy do to you? Holy shit. I have never been in such a bad mood and just so, like... Not in control of my emotions. Oh, wow. When I, I, they prescribed, I used to have this doctor that Tommy called her a gunslinger. Cause <laughs> she would like literally prescribe anything and everything to me. I'd just be like, oh, I'm having trouble sleeping. She's like, oh, cool. Here's a prescription for Seroquel, which is a medication that is used for people that, well, it can be used for depression, but more 
more bipolar, but it's very rarely prescribed anymore because it has such serious side effects. She's like, I saw effects. a commercial. It's fine. There's, I mean, you'll get diarrhea of the mouth and <laughs> anger and right. punching is a side effect. Yeah. But, yeah. I took it to go to sleep. The next morning, I could barely wake up. I was no. so out of it and foggy headed, but I was also in just the worst mood uh, and just like depressed and angry. It was terrible. That's isn't it so bizarre? I guess not bizarre. It's like fascinating how our brains are just like a just a puddle of chemicals. And you know uh-huh. what? If you introduce things to it, it'll change it. I have ADHD for which I am not medicated. I try. You should use computers and uh, tile trackers, really, to manage my ADHD. What is What are tile trackers? They're like a little tiles, and you put them on things that you lose. So I just have, like, tiles on everything. So it's like a little square. And uh, if you want to sponsor the podcast, please, I put them on literally everything in my life. And it's a little square that's Bluetooth connected to your phone. And so you put them on your keys or, like, I put them on my motorcycle key, my house key, my car key. Uh, things I don't want to lose. And then if you lose them, you mash a button and it'll say it's within 20 feet or 50 feet or 100 oh, feet wow. or last seen here. And it rings. And then vice versa for many times that I, for as much as I have my phone in my hand, I lose it constantly. Me too. But if I can at least find one of the tiles around the house, if you mash on it, it'll ring your phone. Even if your phone's on silent. I need silent, this. They're really great. I need to put them on all my chapsticks. Yes, you do, you do lose your for, chapsticks. And you love your our, chapsticks. For our listeners that do not know me personally, I... Have a bit of a problem with chapstick, specifically Burt's Bees. I many would say I'm uh, addicted. I would not argue that. I have to have it with me constantly, and I apply it, and not even I don't even know I'm doing it half the time. But I lose it all the time. So I need these little tiles to put them on. Tommy would be so happy. Because you wouldn't be losing all Yes, time. and then I'll take his, and then I'll lose his, and it's just a never-ending it's a cycle. Thing. It's a whole It's a whole thing. But, but to be honest, they gave me ADHD medicine when I was in college, and one of them, I can't remember the name of it, but one of them, it knocked me out. I mean, I was laid out. Exactly Redlin? Like he said, no, it wasn't really. Because I think it was an SSRI, and mm-hmm. it wasn't a stimulant. And the type of ADHD I have, I need stimulants, which I drink. So I said I'm not medicated. I drink so much coffee all the time. So I'm like... Basically, <laughs> <laughs> wait. So your ADHD needs because that's interesting because ADHD is like means you're overstimulated. Well, right? so, well, it's interesting because like people who don't have ADHD and take like uh, what do you call it Adderall? Yeah, they get all like hyped up. Yes, I I have done that. <laughs> Hi, college. Speaking of college, okay. Well, so they gave me Adderall uh, as a test in college, and it turned me into a motherfucking zombie. Really, it's it leveled me out so much. You know my personality. Yeah, fairly. I told you the other day. People tend to think I'm drunk when I'm not, because I'm just like blah, blah, blah. I'll just say anything that pops into my mouth. You know, pops into my head. You're very bubbly. Very bubbly. I'm always like in a fairly good mood, or mm-hmm. at least like an upbeat. Even if I'm like, well, today's the shittiest day of my life. You know, I'll like kind of joke around about it. Mm-hmm. Uh. I was like, my my boss at the time was like, uh, well, are you okay? And I was just like, I'll organize the tattoos next. We had little temporary <laughs> tattoos we gave out. And she was like, you never organize anything. I was like, it'll be fine. Oh, I'll God. organize the tattoos. It's like a Twilight Zone just, episode. Yeah, she's like, you're like a Stepford wife. Somebody replaced your personality. Oh, man. It's horrible. And then I couldn't sleep. So I sleep like a log, and I sleep very easily. So I normally I'm all jacked up during the day. I put my head on my my beautiful crown royal bag mm. of a mattress, fall asleep easily at night. No, when I was on that medicine, holy cow, I was awake 24-7. Yeah, I thought I was going to gouge my eyes out. So all this to say, bless poor little Elisa Lamb's heart for being on all this yeah. shit because it will, in the right combination, it's great, but it can really screw your brain up. Oh, for sure. I have been on numerous medications for anxiety and depression, and it takes a really long time to find the right cocktail that doesn't make you feel like you're going to climb the walls. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a long, arduous process that is not a fun one to go through. And these were just like four of the medications. She was on She was on even more than this. Some yeah. ADHD mess and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and so it sounds like they weren't working. Perhaps, yeah. Or, well, I mean, or she, she wasn't taking out. them regularly to... That's a problem. And, because the all of these, some of these are SSRIs, and they have to build up in your system. Correct. And then if you stop taking them, it it's, shit up. it's yeah, it's not like something you can just take as needed. Yeah, you that have SSRI, to take them regularly. It was like I had to take one pill one day, then one the next day, then two, then three, then four, then five, then five, yeah. then five, then six, then six, and it's like you know you like build up. Yeah, and it's it's 
And I couldn't just thing. stop. I told them, yeah. I was like, I hate it. They're like, well, okay, we'll keep taking it and just lower it and lower it. And so. then if you, yeah, then if you want to stop, you have to wean yourself off because yes, if you yes. just stop cold turkey, you will lose your mind. Yeah. It's, 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 having mental health problems sucks. Treating mental health problems also sucks. So it's just, just a no shitty answer. situation all the way around. Well, and so she, this is, so in 2012, she, she had a rough go. Yes. Yeah, so in January of 2012, she posted on her blog that she had a relapse and it forced her to drop several of her classes at the university she was attending and that she was feeling helpless and lost because of this. And a recurring quote on her blog was, you're always haunted by the idea you're wasting your life. And that is from Chuck Palahniuk. Have you read some of his books? Uh, first of all, I never knew how to say his last name. I, mm, I'm 80% sure that's right. It could be wrong, though. No. I. Someone told me about a book where somebody sat on a pool drain and their butt yep. got sucked out. Yep, I've read that. No interest in <laughs> that. that. That's, oh, I can't remember the name of it. There's one called Haunted, and then that might be the choke. one that's like. Is one of them called Choke? Cho- there's Choke, yeah. And then. Butthole Suckers <laughs> Anonymous. No. Butthole Pool Suckers is another one. Um, but one of them, I think it's Haunted. The cover has a ghost on it. I did not know it glows in the dark. Oh, no. So I was reading this at night, went to bed, set the book on my nightstand, woke up in the middle of the night to pee, rolled over, nearly had a goddamn heart attack. It's a fucking ghost. Because this ghost is glowing on my nightstand. I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Like, who did this? Yeah. Um, good book, though. He's he. If you like weird, creepy, dark stuff, uh, check him out. He's, I mean, he's, he's very good. Well, on January 26th, of 2013, Elisa made a reservation for a three-day stay at the infamous Cecil Hotel on Skid Row, and which so for we a know little, sucks. Well, yeah, and so for a little bit, she'd been having a nice time in San Diego and texting pictures and calling her parents mm-hmm. and keeping up and saying, I'm having a great time. This is my West Coast tour. Things are going well. Yeah, and then suddenly they weren't. So she makes the reservation at the Cecil Hotel. On January 28th, she checks in. Initially, she was placed in a room with two other women, but they soon complained to the front desk about her odd behavior, and she was moved to a solo room. I've done a lot of digging, and I could not find what the odd behavior was. I could not find somebody describing what it was. Right. Of uh, what they complained about. Judging from what I saw, what we've seen from the video we'll discuss later. Something like that. I imagine, yeah, she was probably just kind of off and acting like erratic and strange. Have you strange. ever stayed in a hostel? No, and I never will. Okay, so I stayed in a hostel the first time I ever went to Chicago, January 20, 2007. And uh, my best friend, Leanne, and I, my wife, my <laughs> wife and I. You're uh, on your honeymoon? Yeah. Uh, we were uh, staying in the hostel, and uh, this lady checks in, and she's like, looks like Julia Child, like the <laughs> elderly woman that cooked on television. Mm-hmm. And just sort of, she barrel shaped around the middle. Just oh, like, nice. just a grandma. She looked, and she was nice. She was Canadian. And uh, she was like, uh, oh, I just, I took the bus in from Toronto. I just want to, you know, see the sights of the city. And we're like, oh, cool, you know, welcome, whatever. And uh, me and Leanne are sitting on the bed, and I was writing in my journal, and Leanne's a very great artist. And she was sketching, and uh, and she, she like, elbows me and flips the page. And this uh, beautiful woman has disrobed to just her granny panties. Ooh. And was uh, in a bra, like a Playtex, kind of like 18-hour bra. Mm-hmm. And she's hunkered over the <laughs> side of the bed. This, uh, She's hunkered over the side of the bed. And she's got a Ziploc bag. And she's fiddling with something in the Ziploc bag. And, and Leanne elbows me. And she's like, look what's in the bag. And I'm like, oh, it's drugs. No, it was a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> she, was peeling a, she was peeling a hard-boiled egg she brought herself. And she goes, oh, I boiled these back home in Toronto. And I brought it for a snack. So she's just in her underpants. It was, a, it looked like a fucking Monet painting. It was gorgeous. And Leanne just starts sketching it, and she's like, "This is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen." Draw me like one of your French women. Yeah, draw me like one of your Canadian women oh, hunkered man. over eating a hard boiled. egg. She's the only person in a hostel that's pulled a hard boiled egg out of a plastic baggie because I was like, "All right, she has weed. She has shroom. She has X. Oh no, it's no, a it's a hard boiled egg. I brought it from Toronto. It's really good. I'm excited oh. to eat it. Did you? Did y'all like hang out with her? No. 
She went to. But cool you have to sleep in the same room as yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I will never in my life go to a hostel. It's a nightmare. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I don't want to go to a bed and breakfast. I don't want to go to a hostel. I don't want to do anything where I have to associate with people that I don't want to associate with. Yeah, that's my nightmare. To, I don't want to share space. With no, people. no. I barely like sharing my house with my husband. I'm sure as hell not going to do it with a bunch of people I've never met. That just bring out hard boiled eggs and walk around in their frillies. Or behave erratically and have to get switched to another room. Yeah, all of this sounds like a a nightmare. Well, on January 31st, Elisa was scheduled to check out of the Cecil Hotel and head to Santa Cruz. When her parents did not hear from her because she called them every day to check in and tell them how she was doing, they became worried and contacted the Vancouver PD, who then contacted the LAPD. Initially, her parents did not mention her mental illness to the police for fear that they would write her off. Which isn't that sad. <sighs> so sad. That, I mean, they're, they're not wrong. And they're not wrong, yeah, exactly. they're not wrong. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it would just be, oh, she's probably, well, she probably had a breakdown. But, it, I mean, to me and uh, a lot of people, you would assume, oh, that would make them more concerned, the police more concerned and, and more likely to, like, Escalate this to something that's not just like a maybe a a missing person. Yeah. Well, police questioned the hotel staff and they said they had seen her that day and that she was alone. A manager at a nearby bookstore said she had come into her store to purchase some souvenirs for her family. She said Elisa appeared outgoing and friendly and didn't seem like anything was wrong. The police searched the room she had been staying in, various parts of the hotel and the roof. However, they were unable to search all of the rooms without probable cause that a crime had been committed. That is correct because when you live when you live when you're staying in a hotel, you have a uh, dominion over your room for the time that you're checked in. So you don't have to let the police in if they come to search unless they have a warrant. So to Fun them fact. it was like right now this is just a possible missing persons case, but we don't know if a crime has been committed. Correct. Okay. Well, and there wasn't like screams coming out from one of the rooms. So there's like reasons why police can search an area without a warrant. And one of them is exigent circumstances, which would be like there's smoke coming out from under the door. And they're like, it could be on fire or like someone screaming, help me, help me from inside. And they're like, a person could be injured or someone's throwing stuff out the window that looks like maybe evidence is being destroyed. Mm -hmm. And they're like, kick the shit in so we can save the evidence. Gotcha. So, but in this case, it's just a bunch of people chilling in their rooms. There's not any circumstances for which they would need to enter the room. They also brought canines to the hotel and searched several areas, but the canines did not detect anything in the areas that were searched. So when the LAPD still had no leads as of February 6th, so at this point she's been missing for several weeks. They or posed, several days, like a week. Uh, Yeah, like a week. So she went, the last day was January 31st that somebody seen. saw her, yeah. Uh, they posted missing person flyers in the neighborhoods and online. On February 14th, they released a video of Elisa in an elevator captured at the hotel on the last day she was seen alive. In the video, she is seen acting very strange. The video was widely reposted and immediately went viral. Many commenters found it to be unsettling. It raised many questions and theories as to what had happened to cause her bizarre and erratic behavior. This video. This video. I find it very upsetting. Do you? I do. You I find it unsettling? I, so the so body language experts, uh, also known as just fucking idiots. Um, <laughs> Wait, body language experts are idiots? <laughs> Not all of them, but the ones that were consulted for this case were like, okay. she looks, they, they go, she looks fun, and, like she's having a good time. Oh. No. Okay, so if you haven't seen this video, let's it kind of explain we'll it. We'll describe to the it. List. Okay. So in the video, the... Elevator doors open. Elisa is seen getting into the elevator. She immediately bends down to look at the all the floor buttons and just pushes like 10 of them in a row. And the doors remain open. She's seen like sticking her head out, kind of like frantically looking down the hallway. Uh, she looks then, left, looks right. Yeah, then like darting back in quickly to the elevator and pushing herself up against the wall. She hides like around in a corner yes. where if you were outside the elevator, you wouldn't see her. Yeah. She sort of flails her arm, kind of come hitherly through the elevator door. Yeah, at one point she kind of steps out 
a little bit past the the doors of the elevator and it almost seems like she's talking to someone and motioning to them but we never see that person on camera so and the entire length of this video it appears that the elevator is malfunctioning because the doors are never closing nobody else comes on to the elevator it doesn't mm -hmm. go anywhere you don't see anybody walk past the no, open doors no and then eventually she just walks down the hall out of sight of the camera and very quickly after she leaves the doors to the elevator shut and then a few seconds pass they open a few seconds pass they close like like it would if it had just started working again and maybe somebody was pressing the button on the outside that's it's so. it's very creepy. There's no audio to it. And it's, multiple people have a list of theories to explain why she might have been acting the way she did. Well, and also some people allege that the video has been sped up or slowed down yes. in parts. And also, like, edited. The timestamp in the bottom corner is blurred out. It's obscured. Some of the parts of the video seem kind of sped up or slowed down. There's uh, about a minute of the video that was edited out before it was ever released, and that has a lot of people speculating. A lot of people, though, say that could have just been, like, perhaps another uh, resident of the hotel did come on, and they deleted them out so there wouldn't be any kind of suspicion because they'd already been, their name had been cleared and they just didn't want to be wrapped up in it or that something. That makes sense. Yeah. So here are some theories as to explain explain why she might have been acting this way. Some make sense. Some make very little sense. Yeah, some it's grasping wildly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the first theories is she was on drugs. Not like the drugs she had been prescribed, but ecstasy or some other kind of Molly party drugs. Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. She did not. To me, I, I have seen people on drugs. I have been on drugs. <laughs> and that is not how... People really act on party drugs. Yeah, she didn't really look like she was having a good time. No, she looks very paranoid. Yes. Like she's trying to uh, get away from someone that might be following her, or she's just very nervous and, and frantic, but she does not look... Which, I mean, some drugs do cause severe paranoia, and you could act like that, but I, I do not think that she was on those kind of drugs. Another theory, paranormal activity. I mean, I guess... Well, obviously it's a demon. <laughs> I mean, well, segueing into the next one, uh, which this could this is wait 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 did we just did we just give up on paranormal? No, activity? I'm oh, going. Oh, oh, they're I'm going connected. To they're connected. Connect the next one into paranormal activity. Proceed. My apologies. So one of the uh, more likely scenarios here that is a possibility is a shady character from the hotel or the seedy neighborhood around it was following her. That makes sense. Yes, because the Cecil Hotel was no stranger to murder, suicides, crimes, prostitution, and drugs. The hotel had opened in 1927 and had so many suicides occur during the 30s, 40s, and 50s that it became nicknamed the Suicide. Elizabeth Short, also known as the Black Dahlia, was a regular at the hotel and had been seen drinking at the bar a few days before her death on January 14th, 1947. In 1964, Goldie Osgood, also known as the Pigeon Lady of Pershing Square, was raped and murdered in her room. Here's some serial killers that stayed there, Heather. Good God. Richard Ramirez, also known as the original Night Stalker, stayed there during his killing spree during the mid-80s. In the 1990s, Austrian serial killer Jack Unterweger strangled and murdered at least three prostitutes while staying there. Uh, and some say that he stayed there because Richard Ramirez stayed there and it was like a uh, homage. Like a tribute to him mm -hmm, almost? That's, mm -hmm. that's real fun. Yeah. Well, Steve Erickson, a journalist who spent a night in the hotel after Elisa's death, was quoted as saying, the Cecil will reveal to you whatever it is you're a fugitive from. You're you're uh, married to a Stephen King fan. Does this remind you of 1408? Yes, it does. God, that movie so. fucking scares the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to be so vulgar, but oh my god, <laughs> there the Leprechaun movie. There's a lot. There's a fairly short list of stuff that just really just wrecks my wrecks my brain. Mm -hmm. John Rex Cusack. Rex, 
<laughs> hardly know him. John Cusack. Love him, by the way. For Oh, I my God, I met him, John you guys. Cusack. I have you a did? really cute picture of me and John Cusack. Let me just say, like, everybody else, he kind of begrudgingly, like, put it, like, okay, smile. And I was, like, super bubbly, and I was like, hey, how are you? And he just, like, was very disarmed. Where was it? At, uh, like, a Comic-Con, or, like, what was it, Dallas Fan Days, like, two oh, years ago. Nice. And uh, he was like, hey, how, how are you? And when we took our picture, I, like, kind of... I d- d- snuck my arms like around him, yeah. and then he put his arms around me. So we look like a couple, yeah. you guys. A Aww. very is he cute couple. It's cute in real life. He, he is, is in beautiful, movies. and yeah. I love him so much. I love him too. Um, John Cusack, if you're listening, <laughs> oh my god, please be my boyfriend. My heart just fluttered. I'm very successful. <laughs> I'm really funny and cute. She is, she's all of those things, John um, Cusack. I feel like we would get along really. And well. by proxy. You would get to meet me. You get to be friends with Christy, too. If that sweetens the deal. It's a benefit. Um, But this is just my tribute slash, uh, what do you call it, my call to action for John Cusack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call to action. We we will start a uh, change.org to get John Cusack to listen (laughs) to you. Just go on a date with me. I swear to God, you'll have so much fun. You would. Um, I'm a super good date. Um, I bet you are. Well, all this to... So John Cusack in 1408 is this this hotel. Basically, yeah. Where there's like horrible things that have happened. So it's got like bad vibes in yes. all the rooms. So, so to tie this into the paranormal activity, a lot of people, I mean, understandably so, think this hotel is cursed and haunted because of all of the horrific things that have happened there. So maybe not that crazy that it could have been some kind of ghost paranormal thing going on. That perhaps. she, yeah, or that, yeah, something, something Some, chasing something her. Something spooked her, yeah. Here's some uh, more outlandish theories. The government had her killed. This is bizarre. So, and there's not one, but two different reasons why the government may have had her killed. So, the first one is because on her blog, she referenced a project that is currently in the works between the U.S. and South Korea that's funded by the Pentagon to develop invisibility cloaking technology, which just sounds like a fun Harry Potter project, if you ask me. Have you seen those robots, though? I feel like that anything is possible. Which robots? The ones that the army created that literally can just walk, and you push them over, and they just stand back up and keep walking. Oh, God. It's a nightmare. (laughs) So, probably not wrong. Like, they probably do have invisibility cloaks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's There could be a government agent in this room right now with us, and we wouldn't know because he's cloaked in invisibility. Ah, shit, don't say that. <laughs> oh, you know what? You want to leave this house. You want to know what goes on here. Me and my Snuggie <laughs> just filling it with farts, <laughs> watching Seinfeld all the time. Oh, that sounds get out. like a dream. <laughs> just get out of my house. Save yourself. So the second government reason could have been that they were using her as a guinea pig for a trial of a tuberculosis test. Here's where things get really weird, though. So You mean weird like this theory makes no sense or weird like it may have ha- happened? Weird that this is too coincidental for my brain to make sense of it. Okay, yeah. So the test that they, that use, that they use for this tuberculosis test is called the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or as it's known, lamb elisa. That's weird. Is that not fucking crazy? Like, this was not named because of her. This was already an established thing. That's so weird. And then her name just happens to be Elisa Lamb. And they were testing it while she was there? So, well, the the so while she was staying at the hotel, it happened to coincide with the tuberculosis outbreak on Skid Row that kind of affected, like, all of Los Angeles. And a common antibiotic that's administered for TB is called isoniazad, which has side effects of abnormal behavior and confusion. The only reason that this is probably not what happened at all is that the toxicology report did not show this any of these drugs in her system. That's true. Because they did, I mean, they, they were... Spoiler alert, they find a body, <laughs> and uh, they were able to test and do an autopsy. So However, if the government, we, as we know from Dyatlov Pass, Shh. if the government's involved in something, they have the ability to cover things up and edit things out that they don't want the public to know. Like one minute of a video. Yep. Um, I will say I'm a big believer in, like, 
uh, things having meaning, which is probably nonsense. Like, stuff like that happening of, like, oh, it's so weird that that test was going on at the same time she was there. That can't just be a coincidence. But uh, maybe, like, five years ago, this article was written on Atlantic called Coincidences and the Meaning of Life by Julie Beck. And it will blow your friggin' mind. And it's just about how... And you'll appreciate this as a one who has studied psychology, but it's basically how statistically things are likely to happen, even if they're like minutely likely to happen. And it talks about how your brain naturally wants to like make things into order. Mm -hmm. And so when it can't easily come to a logical conclusion, it kind of short circuits and it makes you just be like, wow, it's magic. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, the article's really good. That, recommend. that sounds kind of like a conversation Tommy and I had recently. Oh, really? Yeah, but I can't remember exactly what we were talking about. But it was that same thing of like, kind of like if you, like our brains, if you look at a paragraph and half of the letters have been omitted, your brain can still read what it's yeah. saying because we fill in the gaps and like we make those connections. So we always want things to make sense. But in this situation, and I guess it's kind of what you're saying, like we want this, the fact that the test is called Lamb Elisa and she's staying there when this is going on to like have some kind of a connection. But the reality is it's probably just a coincidence. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, what is it? Carl Jung or whatever talks about it. And they talk about it in the article about, you know, synchronicity that maybe there are things that are connected or maybe your brain looks for connections mm-hmm. and that's why they happen. But it's just one of those like really strange things where you're like, there's no way that could be real. But yeah. I mean, Elise is a pretty, you know, common name. Yeah. Lamb's a common Chinese surname. Sure. Like, you know, it's. Yeah, it's yeah. probably just a coincidence. It's just a mind blowing coincidence. It's just mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. So this next theory is also pretty mind blowing. The Korean elevator game. This is what I really think happened. Do you really think this? I mean, I kind of do. Kind of, in a way. I, I have. I think this could half explain things, and I'll, I'll explain that after I explain the rules of the Korean elevator game. So, the rules of how you play this and why you would play this is to enter another dimension or known or called the other world. So the rules, you have to use an elevator in a building that's at least 10 stories high. You must press the elevator buttons in a specific sequence. If you do this correctly, you may find yourself in the other world. Also worth noting, when you reach the fifth floor, a young woman may enter the elevator, but you are not to look at her or speak to her for she is not what she seems. So, pressing the elevators in a specific sequence, we see in the video of Elisa Lam that she is, like, almost methodically and with intent pressing these buttons. Then we see her maybe speaking to someone and acting very strange. Could that have been the person, the, on the, the woman on the fifth floor, that she wasn't supposed to see? Because she was staying on the fifth floor. Okay. <laughs> The elev- I'm telling you. And so I looked up to the elevator game on some – and, okay, to be fair, the article I read was written by Anonymous. <laughs> Great author. On Thought Very Cat- reputable author. On Thought Catalog where anybody can publish anything. Mm-hmm. And He's I think, probably 12 years old. Yeah. It's a very well-written creepypasta or it's someone who did the elevator game and did it wrong. And they talk about that they got to the fifth floor – and that a woman got on the elevator. They also said that... What happened? Well, it says... Uh, so it says, you know, it, it's been reported that some... Uh, that a woman may enter on the elevator on floor five. She may appear as a stranger who wishes to engage with you. More importantly, she may appear as someone you know. Mm. So then you're kind of fucked because you don't want to be rude. Yeah. Like, um, what, if, what if you're... What if you got on the elevator, fifth floor, You, I walk on... And you're like, oh, my good friend Christy's here. GD trap, dude. And then you don't, you talk to me, and it's not me. Flip side, you don't talk to me, and it is me. And I'm like, what the fuck is Heather? And you're like, what is wrong with Heather? Why isn't Heather talking to me? She's so rude. Why is she so mad? Well, the per the anonymous account I read was that they got to the fifth floor, and a woman did get on. Mm -hmm. And this quoting. The problem is that I never had an opportunity not to look at her because I was looking at the lights above the door telling me which floor I was on. 
and it startled me when the elevator stopped. By then, I was already looking at the door as she was getting on. Well, you dummy, that's not how the game yeah, works. Yeah, you should have um, read the rules. Because really, you're supposed to just, like, stare at the floor or at the buttons. So what, is this woman on the fifth floor, like, a demon? No, this person describes her as a light, she had light hair, light blonde hair, and striking green eyes and freckles. She started talking about how there had been an accident on the fifth floor, and if I would go back with her to help. I didn't speak. Oh my gosh, that gave me chills. And then, it says she started to get angry and started cussing at her. I'm not going to say these very disgusting words, but basically like, fucking pay attention to me, I'm talking to you. Uh, so the, the anonymous said they just like freaked out and moved into the corner and staring at the elevator buttons and was trying to go to the first floor and was hitting the first floor, but it stopped on the third floor. And then the woman on the elevator began to cry like a sad, mournful cry. But then the anonymous said it sort of sounded kind of pathetic, kind of like a trick. Uh And then it said that it became from a cry to this like cackle. Mm -hmm. So she stopped. She started crying slowly and then it went to like a high pitched cackle and hatred filled the person and they grabbed her by the hair and smashed her head into the door over and over again. Like it made the person anonymous person went nuts and started smashing up the girl for crying and laughing. And then Which is probably what they wanted. The, that thing's intent. And then the elevator went like a ding, and the door opened or whatever, and they the person got off at floor one, and it's it just keeps on going. I mean, it's just it's. It sounds like a creepy pasta, but but it's also the I person mean, creepy, said, and that's the and that's the point of creepy pastas is that we, as we discussed in Slenderman, that you get you you suspend reality, and you're supposed to. Pretend like this is real. This is a real thing. And this person said every night for the past 10 nights after she did it, she would go to sleep. And when she would shut her eyes, she felt like she was opening her eyes and was standing in the office building where she had done it. and was like kept getting like trapped back there. Oh, so, God. Anyway, it's really creepy. Well, I mean, so maybe she was... This is what I think. If I, I don't think this is really has anything to do with what happened. But if it did, I don't think it really happened to her. I think maybe she was like, oh, I'm going to play the Korean elevator game. And it was like... And, and she was just doing it because to do it. And then that's what we see on the, the thing. And it didn't... There was no effect. Well, yeah. I don't think that she got snatched up by like the woman on the no, big floor. No, no. So, the most likely theory and what I think happened is that she was having a manic episode due to her bipolar and she wasn't taking her meds and this, what we saw was the result of that. Your theory? Uh, there's some sort of foul play. You, do you do think someone well, might have been chasing her? Well, based on the tank, which we'll get into. Yeah, okay, so, so yes. Yeah, so, uh, and we already said, some believe that the video was tampered with. Because of the missing minute, the missing minute, the time stamp being obscured, some things seem to be slowed up and 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 then slowed down. So perhaps there is something to be said for that too. On February nineteenth, residents of the hotel began to complain of low water pressure. Uh, this makes you want to vomit. Yeah, yeah. Get the buckets ready, guys. This is this worse is than vomit any moment. Anything I've done in a hotel toilet. <laughs> and worse than worse. anything that Christy's done in Albertson's parking lot. <laughs> way worse. It's worse. Way worse. So, Minnie said that the water was coming out of the faucets black <clears throat> and tasted and smelled foul. God. Eventually, maintenance went to check out the water tanks on the roof of the hotel to see what might be the problem. So, this guy's got to take a ladder with him. Yeah. This maintenance man, he's got to unlock an armed, locked door. Because there's four ways to get to the roof. Three fire escapes and one roof door. That only staff has a key to. Staff has a key and it's alarmed, supposedly. Yes. Takes a ladder. He's got to go get on a platform, put the ladder up next to a water tank, open a really heavy hatch. And then he peers into the water tank to find Elisa Lamb's body floating inside. Yep. She was naked, badly bloated, and decomposing. Her clothes, which were coated with a sand-like particulate, her watch, and her room key were also floating in the water nearby. Her cell phone, 
was nowhere to be found. That also makes me suspicious mm-hmm, that there was mm-hmm. foul play. I think the cell phone not being there is a big red flag, especially since she was calling her family daily to check in. Correct. And the depth of the tank made it impossible for someone who would be in the water to pull the hatch down after them. And they, But they also said that there were no signs of, like, scratching or anything on the inside like of the tank. Like she was trying to get out? Yeah, yeah so I think she was... I think that she was knocked unconscious by somebody and then, or not knocked unconscious, but like somehow knocked out whether they put their hand on her mouth or whatever and then stuck her in the tank. And then put her in there? Yeah. So these tanks, uh, there were four of them and they're all, they all sit atop this like large concrete block and we'll post a picture of them on our Instagram, but they are four, four foot by eight foot cylindrical And have a 1,000 gallons of water in them. So they are very big. They provided water to the guest rooms, the hotel kitchen, and a coffee shop. So people have been drinking lattes that have been fouled up by Mm -hmm. tainted water with human remains. She'd been in there for almost almost. a month. Yes. That people were bathing in this, drinking it, (sighs) cooking with it. I mean, the kitchen was using it to cook God knows what. Yeah. Oh, man. So... Yeah, you think it was black and smelled foul? It's because a body had been just steeping in it for a God, month. God, on a rooftop. On a rooftop, yeah, exactly, with, like, the, the L.A. sun beating down on it. Oh, oh. Well, fairly quickly, the coroner ruled the cause of death as an accidental drowning. However, no one had a clear answer as to how she wound up in the tank. Like Heather said, the doors and stairs to the rooftop were locked and only staff had the keys. Some speculated that perhaps one of the doors had been mistakenly left open, but that probably would have set off an alarm. Some think she accessed the roof via the fire escape. Even if she had, to access the top of the tanks, a ladder had to be used and there wasn't one on the roof. In addition, the lids to the tanks did not have hinges. While it's feasible one person might be able to remove the lid on their own, putting it back in place once inside the tank would be nearly impossible. This is why I think somebody may have been involved. Yeah, it couldn't have just been her. It's, I mean, I've never had a manic episode, so I'm not entirely sure like what goes what, on in your mind. What you might be capable of in that scenario. Yeah, or what goes on in your mind. If she, I do think she was having a manic episode, and that's what was going on in the... The video. The elevator. If she thought someone was chasing her and her life was in danger, perhaps she did go up the fire escape onto this roof and tried to hide in, in this water tank. That's what some people think. But or... how would she have got the lid back on? Because she could. It's so deep, you can't stand. No, yeah, so you can't she's stand. she's not being able to stand and do it. So it's just it seems you'd have to have almost like superhuman strength, which maybe if you're having a manic episode, you can muster. Or what I I mean, it could be too that you know she got in the tank. A worker goes up to check the roof, sees mm. the, the lid off, and goes, "Oh, well, that's weird. This lid's off the tank." And if she's having a problem and is like scared for her life and hides up against the side, and they just put the lid on because they maybe. think, "Well, shit," you know. Why was she naked? I mean, when I had that bad reaction yeah, to that yeah. stuff, I yanked my fingernails off yeah. and wanted to yank all my clothes off. So, I mean, you just, there's not a rational they're, they're, explanation. Yeah, I think that, I do think she could have got into that tank on her own accord. I also don't think it's crazy to think someone put her in there. Yeah, or she was in there and somebody left her in there yeah. or somebody locked her in there. Yeah, I think, I, I don't think that someone was chasing her when the elevator thing was going on. Oh, really? I think that perhaps, That was, like, in her head, maybe? Yeah, I think she was having, like, hallucinations and a manic episode. That's not to say... I mean, the, there. this is Skid Row. There's ne'er-do-wells all in this hotel, all in this neighborhood. Maybe she just... Wrong person, wrong time, and... Ran into somebody, yeah. or... Yeah. Or, I mean, it could have even been a staff member. If That's they true. have the keys, you know? Because there hasn't been any other video released. No. You think that the police officers would have, you know, watched the video maybe? I don't know. That, I mean, they, they obviously ruled it a dr- accidental drowning. Accidental drowning. And they did say that um, the bipolar disorder was a factor into it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. 
Yes. So, not surprisingly, guests of the hotel filed a class action lawsuit against the hotel. Elisa Lamb's parents also sued the hotel for wrongful death, claiming that the Cecil should have done more to ensure the safety of their daughter and other guests. I'm so sorry, parents. Yeah. The motion to dismiss of your case has been uh, approved. Yes. Because it, uh, in this case, the roof was so hard to access. Mm-hmm. It was locked. To get in the tank, you had to ha- bring your own ladder. It's not foreseeable for the hotel that a person would drown. This isn't some sort of tripping hazard. That's how you can sue Kroger or what is it? You slipped on PP in the Costco. That's how you can sue a place like a hotel or a uh, grocery store or something like that is if it's a known hazard and they failed to take reasonable measures to protect the public. But I actually sat through a trial of a guy who sued a hotel because in it was in Ohio and I was here. He was from Dallas, I think. I don't anyway, ended up in federal court, but he had tripped on a rug coming into the hotel and you know, they put the rugs out because it was snowing mm-hmm. at the time and it sops up all the water and he tripped on the rug, but no one had reported to any staff members that the rug was like askew. Nobody else had tripped on it. So it, it basically he made this big case. He felt he was crying on the stand and the judge fell asleep. It was actually a pretty bad performance <laughs> from the plaintiff. Wow. But he, he had made this big like show of like Was this, he hurt? He broke his ankle, I think. I mean he tripped and fell and broke his ankle, which sucks, but like you're not gonna sue for a hundred thousand dollars of damages. The, it's it's an accident. Sometimes like there's just accidents. Sometimes accidents just happen. It just happened. And in this case the hotel could have done anything because they didn't know that the rug was askew. So I've also if someone had com- said Hey, I've tripped over that rug coming in and out of here several times. And oh, yeah. they didn't do anything about it and then he tripped. Correct. It's a known hazard. They had yeah. a, they had a duty to remedy it. Or like if say for instance you're lucky on King of the Hill and you slip on PP in the Costco, the only way you're <laughs> going to get a payout is if someone points out to a Costco worker, "Hey, there's PP on the floor." And they go, "Oh yeah, we'll get somebody. We'll see what happens." Right. And then they don't do anything and then Lucky comes along and slips on the PP. Well, then Lucky is entitled to recover for his damages because it was a known hazard that Costco didn't fix. So in this case, there wasn't any complaints of like kids get up on the roof and go swimming in the tanks or no. like people are going up there and bathing in the tanks. It it was a closed off area. They would have no reason to think anybody would go up there. So unfortunately, you know, there the hotel is not responsible. However, on the class action lawsuit of the funky water situation, that is case is still pending. Oh, really? It's certified as class a class of people because it's everybody that stayed at the hotel from uh, February 1st to February 19th when they extracted the body. Mm-hmm. Because as they were extracting her body, they were still checking guests in. And they were oh like, just don't drink the water. Just heads up. Like, just make sure you don't drink the water. Like, they weren't, like, they didn't shut the hotel down. That's crazy. They were giving guests bottles of water, but I don't think that. It's I mean, like Flint. Yeah. Right. This was like one there. I like that there's a lawsuit from one single hotel versus like a whole city of people that don't have water. Nobody's doing shit else about it. But uh, in this case, the hotel knew after they they knew or reasonably should know if the guests are complaining, however long the guests were complaining, that they they had a duty to fix the water. Yeah. And not poison the people with the body. I mean, it wasn't just like, don't drink this. You can't bathe in it. It, it goes to a coffee shop. It goes to the kitchen that's yeah. supplying all the food and everything for the hotel. They just poison tons of people for they a long time. They need to shut that shit down. Yeah. that The hotel, even if it's not, like, cursed, like, with a demon, it's cursed with just, like, bad ownership for the last, like, yeah. 50, 100 years. And just being a cesspool of gross shit. It's just ba- Yeah. Oh, God. And I, we, we didn't even go. There's a whole list. People have... Killed themselves. A lady threw a baby out the window. Oh, God. I, I didn't know I that. I mean, people shot themselves. Slit their, I mean, it was. it is a... One guy jumped out of the window, landed on a pedestrian standing in front of the hotel, killed Good them both. Jesus. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. So it's like, burn the thing down. Yeah. Like, bulldoze it and make it into a park or something. I don't know. Well, um, they have. So, due to all the horrific events associated over the years, they tried to rebrand themselves called themselves the Stay on Main. That did not take, though. It was not enough to save its reputation, and it eventually boarded up its doors and windows. Currently, it has been purchased, and it's being renovated and remodeled into a mix of hotel rooms and residential units because, like we mentioned earlier, Skid Row is kind of being gentrified. They're trying to turn it around, and they're hoping this 
will also be turned around. A very interesting take I read was a woman who was in charge of, like, the Los Angeles Housing Council. And she, because American Horror Story has a yes. season based on this hotel. Okay. First of all, fuck that show. It sucks dick. But, but, hot take from Christy <laughs> But also. I've never watched it because it looked too spooky. It's just stupid. I don't was like it? Ryan Murphy and the whole thing sucks. But, <sighs> and at me if you want. I Tweet at me. I don't care. That show is the worst. But they, it's also just in such poor taste to, like, it's in American Horror Story. There's been like several shows. There was a How to Get Away with Murder, another made for TV movie. There's been tons of things based on this. It's like this is a real person that died, and her family had to go through the most horrific thing, and now it's just been sensationalized and turned into this like Hollywood story. It's, That's true. I mean, it is kind of it does kind of take advantage of. A person who, you know, passed away pretty tragically. Actually, a series of people who passed away pretty tragically. It makes me think of the t- the hotel, the Hyperion Hotel on the TV show Angel. If any of you watch Buffy, I did Angel not fans. watch that. Also, a very scary hotel. David Boreanaz is, that's like peak hot David Boreanaz. Yeah, is he was that, pretty good looking. The episode where they like first get to the hotel. But anyway, the lady from the Los Angeles Housing Council had a really good point that like for like a while they were using part of the hotel, the Cecil Hotel, as low income housing for like elderly, disabled, and like disadvantaged people. And by sort of like grossly taking advantage of its history and being like, this is a creepy haunted mm-hmm. hotel. You further, like, diminish the value, which then led those people all to get evicted from their house because then the owner was like, well, shit, it's a haunted place. I'm never going to make money. I might as well sell it. And now it got sold, and now you have all these people that got booted out on the street, basically, because somebody wanted to squeeze all they could out of the, you know, the haunted slash cursedness of this hotel. So I thought it was interesting that it's a way for Hollywood elites to prey Mm -hmm. on these people who literally... They're so poor that they have to live in a haunted hotel. Yeah. And now yeah. now they can't even live there. They're like, not they doing it them. ironically no. because they think it's cool. No, and now you fucked them and now they can't even live there. Yeah. And now where are they going to live? It's super sad. Yeah. What's, it's real unfortunate. So we talked kind of about how after the fact, films, TV, various things played on this story. However, before this happened in 2005... The movie Dark Water came out. Can I just briefly, just a side story about Dark Water. Did you see it? Oh, I saw it in the theaters. Oh, wow. We were in the second to last row. I was with my sister Shannon, uh, my older sister, who's the the toughest, coolest person I've ever met in my entire life. Shannon was wearing her glasses. She's since got contacts, but she had her glasses on at the time. And uh, we're in the second to last row, and this guy behind us answers his cell phone. Uh, What year did you say it came out? 2005. 2005. Oh, yeah. So I was about 18. Shannon would have been about 25, 24. I don't know, math. And uh, she, the guy answers the cell phone, and he's like, oh, oh, I'm in the movies. Yeah, I'm watching Dark Water, which is AMC 30 in Mesquite. Mm -hmm. I'm watching Dark Water. Nah, it's not very good. (laughs) I think, no, I don't don't know what happens. You know what? I'm not sure what happened. My sister whips her head around, doesn't say a word to the guy, and just starts staring at him. Good for her. And since we were in the second to last row, the light from the projector hits her glasses. So it's very obvious that she's turned around staring at him, and he's like, Hang, hang on a second. Hang on. What? <laughs> to my sister. And, and what just an idiot. With full clarity and just, just the strength in her of all get out in her voice, she goes, well, it, apparently your conversation's more important than the movie, so I thought I'd turn around and listen. Oh, nice, Shannon. And then he just puts the phone back up to his ear and goes, I gotta go. <laughs> what, what happened in the mid-2000s where people thought they could just answer their phones whenever they wanted? Like... For I don't go to any movie theater that is an Alamo Draft House. Same, same, I, same. I refuse to pay fourteen dollars to sit in a movie theater where that kind of shit goes down. Some idiots just gonna be whispering or chortling or talking over the movie. Hell no! Answering their phone, you can't even get te- out. You can't even text in a don't Alamo. text. I don't want to hear. I almost got into a fight watching Straight Outta Compton, and I think what nice. a great film. First of all, yeah, I think I was feeling a little jacked up. <laughs> Yeah, of, that's a film that'll jack you I up. felt very, I felt like I could take on the world. And some kids a row ahead and a few seats down from me had their phone out. And I was like, hey, 
put your fucking phone up. <laughs> and they turned and looked at me, and I was like, yeah, you. Yeah. And they were, these youths were Ugh, scared. They're the like, the worst. lady's so mad. I'm like, don't call me a lady. But... I saw that movie by myself at the North Park AMC. <laughs> Hell yeah. But they were just texting. They weren't even talking or anything. They just had their phone out. But, but you it... see the light. Thank it's you. Distracting. They were in front of me, and they're, yeah. I got a lady kicked out of Alamo Draft Did House. you really? It's a Hell dream yeah, of mine. It's a dream. We, Tommy and I went to go see it. It was opening weekend. It's very important to Tommy as a Stephen King fan, yes, I imagine. Yes, he had been looking forward to this movie for months. Like, it was, I was, I was definitely pregnant. Um, and we were very You were pregnant excited. watching the movie. You didn't get pregnant after the movie. No, uh, I got pregnant during the movie. Hey. No, I was very pregnant during the movie. But we were on the, like, end by the, you know, the stairs, these this fucking couple comes in. First of all, they come in late, uh, so they miss the whole shut the fuck up. They miss the whole do not talk or text. You're gonna be asked to leave. Spiel. They sit down immediately. She's for, she's clearly drunk. She came in drunk. Then yeah. they're ordering drinks. She's still drunk. She's talking to him, laying all over him. She starts getting out her phone and okay. taking video of the movie. No, on her she's phone. a bootlegger. And I, but it would just be like, like a minute clip, and then she's, she's like, like post Snapchatting. It. Yeah, she's Snapchatting or posting on Instagram or something. But she, the rest of the time, she's not watching the movie. She's just like paying attention enough to make it seem like on social media Good. that she's watching this movie. God. Then she starts vaping. No, <laughs> come on. Then she takes out a pill bottle and starts taking pills. And I was like, Jesus. what is happening? She's having a, she's hitting rock bottom she, at Alamo. All, 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 she's everything. It's the, it's, she's ticking all the boxes. The trifecta. Yeah. So I, I take out a little piece of paper like you're supposed to do and write down to our server. Like you just wrote, kill this woman. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote, if you don't, I'm going to. Yeah. And they, the, they're always very cool about it. And they, act, you know, they try not to act let on that you're the one that did it or whatever. Oh yeah, they usually like walk off, which yeah, is so very nice. She walks off like like I just ordered food or whatever. And you know, they they keep an eye on them and stuff. But then of course she shuts up. Damn it. Yeah. So then they will leave, she starts doing it again. I'm like, "Motherfucker." Meanwhile, this it's been like an hour of the movie that I haven't even been able to focus Because of rage. On, That's I my problem. In rage. Well, for for our for our non US listeners and our non Dallas listeners, the Alamo Draft House is a sacred movie theater yes. where if you talk, text, or make a scene or whatever, you get asked to leave once, and if not, they'll kick your ass out without a refund. Yeah, and it's like you're, they're you're, famous. You're warned once. If you do it again. You get kicked out. And it's not just like a movie theater where you have to kind of complain about it. They're like super serious about it. And that's Mm -hmm. why it's the only movie theater I'll go to. They also have uh, full bar and good food. So good. Gluten-free pizza. Cider, I can as a as a wheat allergist, I am just able to eat so many things there. Chips and queso. All of the previews before well, not even the previews, like the stuff. The pre show is the pre show. It's themed to whatever movie you're watching. Yes. So it's really fun to get there like a half hour early and watch all the different like old old shows. They like clip clip. together, yeah, Yeah. weird shit. So the it one was super fun. It was like all old horror movies and like stuff about clowns and weird like YouTube videos about clowns and stuff. So did they eventually kick her out? Hell yes. They I wrote another one and I was like you it didn't is do shit. I was like it is still happening. Now she's vaping. And so then they go and get a manager. And the manager just comes and stands beside us <laughs> for like 20 minutes. Again, I cannot focus on anything other than what's happening. I'm Good totally God. missing the movie. She shuts up because the manager's standing right there. He leaves, immediately starts back. And I'm like, son of a bitch. But he had seen it. He had gone into the shadows because he knew that she was trying to trick him. And he saw it happen. And he came back over. And he was like, you got to go. And he made them get up and leave the theater. That's awesome. Thank you, Alamo. Yes. And then we got home. And I emailed them. And I was like, you guys did such a great job of handling this. Heads up, though. I didn't get to see like an hour and a half of the movie because this was consuming me. And my husband was so excited to see this. He's the biggest Stephen King fan. And they were like, we totally understand. We're sending you two tickets. They're see so it whenever good. you want. Yeah. That's there, so nice. I think there's one in L.A., isn't there? 
Maybe so. I'm not sure. There should be one in every city yeah, in America. It's the, it's the greatest. It's the greatest business. Shout I out to them. Alamo Draft House. Please listen. To, contact John Cusack. Y'all can do like a, a screening a team event where we where you play say anything and then he asked me to to marry him. <laughs> it would be great. I want them to play. What's that movie where he's uh, they're at the motel? The, oh, oh identity! Down. Oh, fuck! That I've movie's seen. So good. Here's a fun fact about me: if I like an actor, I watch every single movie that they've ever been in, including shitty ones. And not that Identity is a shitty one, but I watched all of John Cusack's movies. And shout out to my friend Gypsy. There's a movie called The Factory that John Cusack's in, and it's like they're like stealing babies and selling them. And she what? just was like, "That's the fucking worst movie." I've never even heard of. <laughs> Don't that. watch. It's dumb. It's so dumb. <laughs> most of his movies are very good though, and he's, he's got beautiful. a lot of fun '80s movies. Identity's great. Yeah, very creepy. Oh, man. John Cusack. John Cusack, love you. Alamo Draft House, love you. Elisa Lamb. Bless you, heart. very sorry. God, it's just such a, it's it's such a, it got such widespread attention because of that elevator video. Yeah. And, w- and what seems otherworldly and demonic, and, you know, it's the Occam's Razor thing we always talk about. It's mm-hmm. like the most simple explanation is probably what it is, is this is probably just a very unfortunate situation where she had some sort of medication issue mm-hmm. or relapse where she wasn't taking her medicine. They did do a, a test on the autopsy that yeah. she had taken one of the medicines the day of and one of them the day before but hadn't taken any of the other medicines in a recent enough time that they could attest that the amount of blood they had. Yeah. And so, I mean... Yeah, the coroner took almost four months to release the autopsy report because various things kept happening. Yeah, they did say, this is a very graphic, but that she had a prolapsed anus with like a lot of pooling in that area. So some people say that maybe she was attacked. Others say that could happen just in the natural decomposition mm-hmm. process if you're floating face up. But Which that's she the question was. is she when, was found you, floating face when up. you drown, don't don't you drown face down? You would think, you know, so there's. Oh, just, so you think maybe she was thrown in there dead? Yeah, or or th- thrown in there unconscious. Yeah, something bad happened to her, so bad that it, you know, she was unconscious and then she drowned. If you're unconscious and you're in water, you know, you just breathe in what's around you. It's not going to wake you up. The so. fact that she was found face up, naked. Yeah. And her cell phone was never found. And posts happened on her Tumblr yes. after her death. So. That's, to add insult to injury, uh, her blog continued to update after her death. And it could be explained by Tumblr's Q feature. Yes, you can set posts to post later. So she may have scheduled these to post before anything happened. But because her cell phone was never located, some think... Maybe the person responsible for her death logged into her account to continue the mind games, which is so... Ugh. That's so... There's a lot of questions to this day. It has not been solved. It's ruled as an accidental drowning with bipolar as a contributing factor. But no one has been able to solve, like, exactly what happened. Her poor family, just, they just want answers. Yeah. It's really sad. I doubt we'll ever get answers, but it is one and of those things, like closed. you said, it's it's so, like, fascinating to amateur sleuths. And because this the elevator video is so viral, like... Even, I mean, this happened years ago, and it's still, like, a very talked-about case that um, draws a lot of attention and curiosity and morbid fascination to it. I think so. Man. We'll, we'll post a video on our new website. Oh, it's beautiful. Check it out, SinisterHood.com. Yes. Christy did a phenomenal job. Oh, uh, well, it's it was very plug-and-play, but thank you very but much. You did a phenomenal job researching where we should have Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that took some effort, but um, um, but yeah, it's still sinisterhood.com, but it just it looks pretty s- sweet and swanky, and there's um, more the- information about us and the show and all sorts of fun stuff on it, and our episodes are like uh, categorized all neat and and sweet. So, a couple of listener shout outs. Yeah. We got a shout out, Matt from Australia. He is so nice. He's the funniest, too. He sends the funniest messages. We and love he, it. he always messages us. He usually tweets us, yes, I love uh, it. or DMs us just to comment on like things we said in an episode. So he's always listening. Most recently, he <laughs> the quote that we posted when we do our quotes on Thursday of our favorite things from the previous episode. The one you said, Heather, of uh, I was just left standing there with a my empty bun, <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, because the Don't seagull had taken your seagull. wiener. He said he thinks it's really funny that we call them wieners 
because in Australia they call them hot dog sausages. Hot dog sausages, That's which makes specific. way more sense. One hundred percent makes more sense. I was like, no, we're the stupid idiots. Why do we call them wieners? There's zero reason to call them wieners. Makes no sense. It's a sausage that goes in a hot dog. But yeah, it's a hot dog sausage. It's a hot dog sausage. Absolutely. Yeah. He's great. So is Laura Harris. Love Laura Harris. She guessed our Slender Man quotes. Yes. Also, and she also emailed us with a um, very interesting uh, topic she wants us to do, which is another ooh. Warren case. So you know Heather's going to you know be all I'll over be that on board. One. Shout out to Marilla, my childhood friend who still listens. And she always texts me funny stuff and listens to us while she works out. So you go, girl. Oh. Get your workout on. Yeah. And also shout out to Susie in Chicago who sent me a message today and said she listens, and she got her friend Diana and my friend Diana to listen. Oh, so nice. shout-out to Susie and Diana, and congratulations, Diana is engaged. That's so exciting. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Get your fiancé to listen, Also, please. tell your fiancé, his friends and family, your friends and family. <laughs> make a speech at your wedding. Uh, I think, yeah. I think, you know, the bride doesn't always make a speech, but you could take this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Susie, you if, you're, if Susie's going to be made of honor, Susie, I think your made of honor speech should definitely. Put uh, it in the program. Yeah, do a plug. Let's do a plug. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking so, of plugs, oh yes, we have a live show. Yes, October twenty sixth. That's a Friday. We had been saying it was eleven p.m. Correction, I said, I it's eleven took... thirty p.m. I was gonna say we didn't always say eleven, but it's eleven thirty for clarity's sake. And you can check out tickets at DallasComedyHouse dot com. You don't have to have a ticket though. It's uh. Just a free show, so you can just come at 1130. We're going to do a pre-party uh, to be determined in Deep Ellum where we'll do kind of like a hangout. You can come hang out with us. A meet and greet. We'll meet and greet for people who already know for us. For people that already have met and greeted us. But we'll probably stream it on Facebook Live or Instagram yeah. or both just to and like interview our friends and talk about creepy stuff because it's going to be right around Halloween. So yes. I love one of my favorite icebreaker questions is, have you ever seen a ghost? Oh, Which that's people, a good one. It's, well, people think you're weird. It's fine. Uh, it's just or weird. they're like... Like, yes, I have, and I've been dying to talk to somebody about it. And that's most of the things are like, well, I don't know if it was a ghost, but I had an encounter. And I'm like, I am all about your encounter. Tell me. Um, And we want to thank uh, all of the people that helped us with our new logo. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Taylor Shepard. She's super talented. I love her so much. Austin Guttery. And Cameron Goldapp and Franklin Countryman coming takes in. Takes a village. Takes yeah, a village, we're like, can you, you do this one thing because another person doesn't have time or doesn't know how? Or So it was a great team effort. And it, it has just come off so beautifully. And it we love great. all four of we're y'all. We're going to have stickers made soon. We'll have stickers to give away at the live show. Mm-hmm. And some, some other, other things goodies. to give away at the live show. Uh, Thank you to my husband and best friend, Tommy Brown. For making a baby with you, making a baby with me, asking me to marry him, editing the podcast, fixing the computer parts of the podcast, cooking dinner, um, waiting till I get home to watch the next episode of Survivor season 12. That's true love. (laughs) That's all I want is for John Cusack to wait for me at home to watch the next episode of our show. Gosh, I'll I... I'll post my John Cusack picture on our Instagram, I, too. Please I'm, do. I'm very proud of it. Gosh, you got to tag him, too. Oh. I think I, <laughs> I follow him on Twitter. He's very political. He's very political. He's woke, y'all. He's very woke. So what I need all of our followers to do is then tag John Cusack in the post yes. so he gets attention so it goes viral, and then we can go on a date. That would be I, fantastic. I, hope, I like to think he's got enough of a sense of humor and quirkiness about him that he'd be like, I'll check this out. I will come to Chicago to go on a date with you, boo. Oh, my God. I will, too. Just I, I won't go on the date, but I'll go. <laughs> Christy, give us some privacy. I'll go with Heather for moral support, and then I'll just do my own thing in Chicago. Thank I'll you. go see a show or something while we'll you Hamilton. guys go. Uh, all right. Well, Hamilton. if you guys, in addition to tagging John Cusack in every in every Sinister Hood post, <laughs> Always, please uh, like, review, and subscribe on iTunes. If you subscribe, it's super easy because a new episode will just pop in your phone. Mm-hmm. And tell a friend who you think would like us to check us out that's even better than the liking and subscribing uh it really helps us grow and it means like a ton of to us if you like it enough to tell a friend yes uh, or do a speech about it it made if you're made of honor at a wedding <laughs> uh, you can follow us on instagram and twitter at sinisterhood pod and like us on facebook at sinisterhood heather where are you at i'm on instagram at heather vs the world and on twitter at mck vs the world I am on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace and Twitter at Christy or GTFO. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Sinister hood.